Coming up on Digging Detroit, we'll meet Mr. Romy Miner, Assistant Manager of the Detroit Public Library's Burton Historical Collection, who will share with us the performing arts treasures found in the E. Azalea Hackley Collection. Welcome back to Digging Detroit. I'm Thomas Reed, and I'm here today in the Detroit Public Library. Uh, I'm joined by Mr. Romy Miner. Uh, Romy, can you tell me a little bit about what you do here at the DPL? I'm uh, currently assistant manager for the Burton Historical Collection, which deals with uh, genealogy and local Detroit history. And uh, we are a repository for City of Detroit, which means we do have records dealing with the city going back to 1701. Map collections, 4,000 manuscripts of early Detroit family and businesses, 250,000 photographs, which we do have now, 73,000 of those are online through our digital collections uh, database, which is on the Detroit Public Library website. So people can uh, look at that. So genealogy, dealing with uh, Detroit as well as uh, Michigan, the United States International. So a lot of material down there, which I'm assistant manager, but I'm also curator of the E. Azalea Hackley Collection. What is the E. Azalea Hackley Collection? The E. Azalea Hackley Collection deals with African Americans and performing arts, all genres, theater, dance, music, uh, motion pictures. The collection was founded in 1943 by a donation from the Detroit Musicians Association. They are the local chapter of the National Association of Negro Musicians. And they decided to um, donate uh, this collection to the library in December of 1943. And this was after the 1943 race riots in Detroit. So six months after that, they decided to uh, donate this collection of African Americans and performing arts materials. And there were books, uh, LPs, record albums for those people who don't know. <laughs> LPs, uh, manuscripts uh, dealing with African American themes and performing arts. Uh, the collection was named after Iazaya Hackley, or Madame Iazaya Hackley, who was born in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And she later came to Detroit with her family. And she uh, became a Detroit public school teacher. And she was always into music. Her mother played the piano, so she was always into music. She decided to have recitals with her kids uh, in the Detroit public schools. And she later became uh, one of the prominent persons who actually push African-American music, um, Negro spirituals, folk music throughout the United States. So she had these recitals. And she actually had books about vocal, how to perform uh, uh, be a vocal artist, performing music artist, and how to do your sounds and how to breathe. So she did all this and she promoted African American music throughout the United States and Europe. When she died in 1922, um, she left a great legacy and the Detroit Musicians Association did not want her to be forgotten. So they donated the materials here at the library in 1943 and they wanted to honor her and name this collection after her. So that's how this collection came about. So it's been almost 70 plus years now. Next, Romy shows us some of his personal favorites from the vaults and previews the upcoming 71st annual E. Azalea Hackley Collection Concert. We get uh, requests from around the world, especially with some of our illustrated sheet music. And illustrated sheet music dates back to the 1800s. Now the composer, does not necessarily have to be African-American. The theme has to be African-American. But we do have uh, great composers and early ragtime. Uh, a lot of this has been preserved for future generations, but most people, um, when they do research, we're the only place that has this. Hmm. And we're one of the um, collections in the country, probably, that has this specific material and this genre. 
So we're like one of a kind. We do have an annual Hackley Open House Noel night, uh, first Saturday in December every year. And I pull out materials so people can look at them and I push the lecture series as well. One of my favorite is from our African American and Film Collection, which we have photos, movie posters, um, theater cards, uh, and it, it goes from the early, um, actually, race movies to the black exportation movies. And one of my favorite is Shaft. <laughs> I always bring out the Shaft poster. This right here um, was actually uh, one of, you can see here, it's actually put on top of something bigger, but this is of the Jackson 5. Right. And this was used to actually promote their albums and um, um, just promote them generally. And I do have people that come in and go, is that Michael Jackson? <laughs> what does it look like, you know? We have a great vintage Motown 45 collection. This is the actual uh, Four Taps Reach Out I'll Be There. This is now, the actual vintage. Has any 45. of this been digitized? No, the we we it's all been inventory, but not digitized. And the even though we have the forty, they're never played. Just <laughs> let you know, those are never played. And another thing we have is actually songbooks. We get a lot of people who request uh, either sheet music or specific songs. And some of our vintage uh, photographs. <laughs> Duke Ellington. They look good there. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Uh, so this is a great resource for researchers. Does the collection do any other sort of programming? Yes. Uh, besides researchers come in that look at our photographs, we have 3,000 uh, to 5,000 books. We have thousands of photographs. We have a great vertical file of clippings that goes all the way back past uh, 1943, dealing with performers, individuals, African-American related and performing arts. Besides that, we do have several programs that we do out, that we do throughout the year, including our annual Hackley concert. When they donated the collection, Detroit Musicians Association back in 43, they did have a concert that night when they donated that it. That night? That night they had a concert. <laughs> and ever since then, there has been a concert uh, either at the library or offsite, either at a local church they have several at local churches. There's been an annual Hackley Memorial concert. In 1942, there was a long concert at uh, Fred Hart Williams' uh, home. He was very prominent uh, in Detroit as well as for the Detroit Musicians Association. So they had a fundraiser to actually start collecting money to um, purchase the items, the original items. A lot were donated, a lot were purchased. So they started in 42, but when they, um, when they donated the collection in December of 43, they did have a concert here at the library also. So when is the next one? Next, next one is February 11th. And uh, this will be the 71st concert. Um, we just had the big 70th last year. We had cut time players last year uh, with George Shirley, who performed a piece for the legacy of Roland Hayes. And they decided a while they wondered that all mankind must come under. Little boy, how old are you? Roland Hayes was this very predominant African-American concert artist in the early 20th century. So uh, Patrice Russian actually did a um, composed a piece for the legacy of Roland Hayes about 11 years ago. And we finally got to do it live with the cut time players and George Shirley for the 70th. So that was a big one.
Who's playing this year? This year we have Alvin Hill, who is techno music. So all of the artists, and we have three other ones, will be doing performances inspired by the collection. So Alvin Hill, and we also have the Masters of Harmony uh, with Thomas Kelly, who's over 100 years old. Wow. Also, Pamela Weiss featuring uh, Wendell Harrison, so she'll be, uh, uh, she's a uh, pianist, and she'll be uh, with her husband performing as well. So we have three acts performing yeah. on February 11th, uh, Where are we 2015. Gonna... It'll be downstairs in the main library, the Clara Stanton Jones Friends Auditorium, and it begins at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, February 11th. Free and open to the public, so... Uh, you can come out and enjoy yourself, and uh, it should be great. Are there any major sponsors for this? Major sponsors, uh, Comerica Bank is a major sponsor. Our um, janitorial service, ABM, for the <laughs> library is a major sponsor, as well as the Friends Foundation um, here, D DPL Friends Foundation, the Friends of the Hackley um, Friends um, as well, and uh, Detroit Public Library are major sponsors. This sounds fantastic. Now. Is there any other sort of programming that goes on around here? Yes, what I do uh, for the collection every year is a lecture series. So I've been doing lectures uh, for the collection since 2008. And they've covered everything from black and tan clubs that were used to be in Paradise Valley, a lot of the uh, jazz clubs like the Blue Blurred In, so we went over a lot of that. And then we did one segment just on Motown. And then we did an after Motown one. So. Uh, with that and we just do various artists, whether they are performers or uh, motion picture artists such as Sidney Poitier. We've done one on Spike Lee. We've had Whitney Houston. We did one with Whitney Houston. I did a two-parter on Michael Jackson and the um, um, Fine Arts Room, which is most of them are done in this area here, but we knew we were get a lot of people. So I did a two-part over two nights, first 25 year, years of his life, and the other 25, it was a Tuesday, Wednesday night. We had over 150 wow. people show up. That was really big. And I actually do perform at these. So really? I will do songs from the performers. When is your next one? Next one will be uh, April 29th. We'll start off with Prince. And then in June, we will have Stevie Wonder, and July will be funk groups of the 70s. Parliament, oh, so Parliament, Parliament, funk. Funk, <laughs> Parliament Funkadelic, <laughs> Ohio Players, the Commodores, uh, Earth, Wind and & Fire, yeah. Uh, and then we always do one in, uh, with jazz in August. It'll be the um, uh, Cotton Club Memories. We will do Cab Calloway and Lena Horne. We'll look at their lives. We've done all genres and it's been great because people, what I love about it is become their lecture series now. It's been done for so long and they come in with the memories they have of a particular artist and I think the best one I did uh, was Miles Davis. That was a really, because people saw Miles live and they were like, well he had his back turned to me when I saw <laughs> live. And I did one on Troubled Man which was on Sam Cooke, Marvin Gaye, and Rick James which I did perform each a song from each of them, which was great. But you had your Marvin Gaye fans, you had Sam Cooke, you had Rick James. So it was, it was really good and I really enjoyed it. So it's a great lecture series and, um, and they run uh, from April to November of this year. So, Well, again, we appreciate your time, Rummy, and uh, thanks for showing okay. us the fantastic collection here. You're welcome. Come back and talk to us again All sometime. All right. This was great.